Hey guys, John Richardson here with Your Reality Recaps. Excited to bring you Evicted House Guests, Season 3 of Big Brother Canada interviews all season long. If you have questions for us, we do our show 3 o'clock Eastern every Friday where we recap the entire week, all three episodes of Big Brother Canada 3. And we want to hear from you. So tweet us your questions, hashtag it YRRLive, let us know if you have any questions for the house guests, and they will be featured on our exit interviews. All right, since you're here, subscribe to our channel. Get all of our updates. All right, with that said, check out our interviews. Hey, Bobby. It's Dana from YourRealityRecaps.com. How you doing? Great. And yourself? I'm great. Just let me say, you know, I was rooting for you. You're my hometown boy. I'm from Oakville. You're from Oakville. Yeah. It's, it's so sad for me right now. Oh, I'm so sorry. I tried my best. <laughs> I know I you did. I know you did. Let's get right into it. So okay. what, what the... was your strategy for lying about your secret veto? And how did you plan on salvaging your game once they found out it wasn't real? My strategy for lying about the secret veto was to tell the chop shop that I had it. So they would kind of want to keep me around because I knew after the JP vote, after that happened, I was going to lose a lot of trust with them. So I needed them to keep me around so I could potentially use it on them, and then I needed the rest of the house to believe I had the secret veto so they wouldn't take a stab at me and get blood on their hands if I was just going to be there the next week and use my secret veto to save myself. So that's kind of why I got Cindy to spread around the message. At that point, I felt like my back was against the wall. I had felt it for a couple of weeks. Bruno told me Zach was coming after me, so I really need to lie about it. Had I planned on salvaging my game once they found out? Uh, as far as that went, I was going to, to Zach, I was going to, Unfortunately, there was nothing I could have done to salvage that. He had already not trusted me after the JP vote. So I was going to pretty much pretend like the, to the entire house, I was lying to the entire house. So at least that way, the showmances were going to come after me. And then I was going to hopefully try to get Sarah's vote out of that because it would be a great shield for her. So I was pretty much that whole veto ceremony, it was geared so that Sarah would want to keep me because, so like as a shield against Zach and the showmances. So that's kind of, hopefully I was going to salvage my game with that. And that's why I kind of, had a nice fake victim blow up kind of bad guy situation on the veto ceremony. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. What part of Big Brother did you find the hardest? The mental, the physical, or the social side and why? Um, I have to say the social side. I was kind of isolated a little bit from the house guests. I was a little bit older than some of the people that would always be talking and staying up late. I didn't have much to relate to them with. Um uh, they seem to have got drunk off of one beer and I couldn't even for So it was really tough to kind of fit into them. They're a lot younger. I actually was seeing a little older. But the mental side, I was throwing, so I didn't care about that. That wasn't hard. Physical side, I felt like I had under control. I was a physical guy. I thought I could do good in the comps. There weren't nearly enough physical comps that I wanted to be in the house. All the HOHs were more or less crap shoots, so that kind of sucked. So I'd say the social side, it was kind of hard to really approach people, especially later in the game, and it almost seems fake, like when, when we bring up my, bring up each other's lives and past and history, and I, it was hard to connect, especially with the people younger than me. Didn't have much in common. I totally understand. Okay. You and Cindy never saw eye to eye in the house. How hard was it to be locked in the vault, and did you ever seriously consider hitting that button? I never considered hitting the button. Even I wanted to show kind of some mental fortitude here. I wanted to show that I don't care what this button could do. It could be something awful. And I really wanted Cindy to believe the same thing. So I never considered hitting the button at all. And it wasn't that bad to be locked in the vault, honestly. You know, I, I love working out. So uh, I just kind of used that time. I saw the positive in being stuck in a vault. I said, let me try to push out a thousand sit-ups. It'll be a fun little challenge. I did a lot of yoga. Cindy slept a lot. <laughs> got to talk to her a little bit more on a personal level, which is actually really nice. I got to see that she was an amazing person as well. So I did get closer to Cindy in the vault. It was awesome to meet her. It wasn't that bad in the vault. It was only 24 hours. It could be worse. You were so reluctant to turn on the chop shop. Did you really believe that the chop shop could stay together long term? Um, long term, I had hoped so. And yes, I guess I was a little bit uh, blind, but I knew that we'd never, we'd never take each other to final five after Greg left. I know that was definitely unrealistic. I thought, however, maybe final eight we would still be together after we started. I came up with this plan called the Pentacup plan. I thought it was amazing. We each picked someone to get close to, and we'd take them out and find out all information, bring it back to the chop shop. 
after Zach wasn't telling me a thing that him and JP would talk about, I knew it was kind of dying. Bruno definitely convinced me that it was completely dead. And that's kind of when I gave up on the chop shop a lot it was because of Bruno and the intel he had because he's a super smart guy and he gets great reads on people. He was an awesome alliance member to have in the house. Yeah, great totally. final two, buddy. Totally. Who do you think left in the house has the best chance of winning the game? Oh, gosh. Um, I would have to say it's between Sarah and Godfrey. Um, Sarah has a bigger target, I think, on her back than Godfrey does. Godfrey, if you're smart, you'd probably throw the next HOH or a couple because right now I think Sarah's definitely got a bigger target. She's more vulnerable, too. I would say, depending on the final two, final three, I'd say Godfrey has the best chance at winning Big Brother. Um, if he's up the side, I'd say if he's up the side, Asher, Peely, or B, he's going to take it. I can't see Godfrey and Sarah being final two. So if Sarah goes, I think Godfrey has the best chance at winning Big Brother. Okay, and my last question. On behalf of all the girls in Canada, let me just say we loved watching you work out in studio <laughs> How much did you miss your rock climbing and, like, really exercising in that house? Oh, my God. Anyone who knows me knows that I actually don't work out. I hate working out. I Lifting weights, I've never lifted weights in my entire life. My hobbies are my working out. Just not having my slack line or rock climbing in the house is so hard for me. I wanted, like, a chin up bar or something, but I really lost a lot of muscle mass in the house. I miss rock climbing the most out of any exercise, and it's my passion. It has been for the last three years. It's something amazing about trying to, like, solve a rock climbing problem and getting up that's so different than just lifting weights repetitively. It's so boring and just not me. So not having my hobbies, my yoga, and at least I have my yoga, but not having my rock climbing or slack climbing was really tough for me. I can't wait to get back and hop on some uh, rock. <laughs> I bet, and that's all I've got. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me, and I hope we can, like, meet up in Oakville sometime soon. Yes, absolutely. We're going out for drinks, Dana. I'd love to meet you. Oakville girl. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I love you. Anytime, honey. One love.